Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday. It's October 16th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and I'm doing this a little early today. It's after two o'clock, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm doing it early based on when I usually do it. I usually wait till after the market closes, but uh, I have another obligation today, so I'm going to go ahead and do this early and get it uploaded, and uh, so uh, it's there. But anyway, just a range day today. Um, I started out with the highs up here at the overnight highs, but in the end, it's probably a little lower here. This is probably going to be your where you should have had your highs for the day. You can see you got most of your touches there, including a little failed break higher here. I did not mark this trade right here because at that point we were still looking at this over this gap up here. This was where the gap would be to fill on the over on the daily chart. And notice we never got there. We got really close, but we didn't quite get there. So um, looking at that, if you'd have uh, looked at this line down here a little, being that far away from the MA, you might have considered this trade. I just think it's risky. We already had a break and a new high, but we really only got one move up there. And there's a good chance it tries to go higher one more time. So I think you were better off skipping that. And you can see that most of your resistance for the day came right along that point. And um, down here at the lows, we ended up making a little higher low, but we're not done yet. You can see we're still working lower here and there is a trend line working down. So, um, and this is a big enough range. I mean, 29.85 to, I mean, it's about a 12 to 13 point range, maybe 14 if you consider where the overnight highs were. So it's big enough to have trends back and forth. Um, I like it much better when you turn down at the same place every time. So it's more consistent. So you had a little bit of consistency off the highs, but not a lot. You just bounced down here twice and the rest of the time, you know, you bounced kind of early. So it's not as consistent, but you still get set. You still got some setups down here all the same. So, um, Anyway, this is clearly a range day, and you can see how flat that EMA is. It's just it's undulating up and down, but it's straight across. You're, you're not pointed straight up. You got a little bit of a trend right here, but that's just going from one side of the range to the other. And then you got a little bit of a trend back down, but again, you're just going from one side of the range to the other. And when you see your EMA sideways like that, even though it's going up and down, it's still going sideways. You're not pointed straight up or pointed straight down. And you can see prices swinging, you know, they're trading below here, then above, then below, above, below, above, below, above, below. That's a range. When you see that, that's a range. It can change as the day progresses, but while it's doing that, it's a range. And honestly, I like these kind of days, especially when you turn down every time off this level and you turn up every time off this level because it gets very predictable. So uh, I like range days like this. These days are hard for people that can't read the chart. They're hard for people to trade. And if you don't turn at the same spot every time, they're a little harder. you got to learn to spot the traps and that kind of thing and, and really basically know, how, understand the basics of price action so you can read the chart and know that, hey, this is a trap or whatever. Like right here, this is a trap. It's a double test and a trap. Really, you're kind of going sideways. But notice how you made that low. You tried to go lower once, twice. That's a failed second entry short. It's a double test. It's it's actually a quadruple test. We tested that multiple times. If that would have been a really strong signal bar, I'd have made that blue and said going along there because you're probably headed up here to fill that gap. And, uh, you know, you try to go low that many times and don't succeed, you're probably going higher. And so uh, even though there's some matching highs there, if you shoot through that after trying to go low that many times, you're probably going to rock it on up real quick. It's because some people are going to exit that we're getting short here. They're going to be wrong and they got to exit. So, uh, but the reason you don't get short there is because we got a trend line working up and we just came off the lows of the range. So we're probably headed to the highs, but people that don't understand prices don't understand that. And they see those big bearish bars and they try to go short. I guarantee you somebody listening to this video tried to do just that, tried to go short there and they got trapped and burned. And that's what makes that rocket up like that because they put their stops. If you're getting short here, you put your buy stop or your safety stop right here. And then when you when they finally push it through and it hits that, it rockets up real quick. And that's what causes that because I hit all those safety stops. But anyway, let's back out, talk about the trades and wrap it up because I've got to get out of here early today. 
want to make it a little bigger. But you can see your overnight high, your overnight low, and we traded within that all day. And that's a clear sign that you're probably in a range. So uh, but we were working up here. You get a close outside. You try to go higher once. You try to go higher twice. <clears throat> and you get a second entry short there as well. Um, notice that low, first entry, second entry. So I like going short there. You probably trap some longs. Um, it doesn't look like it trapped a lot because it didn't take off real fast. It was probably a little confusing uh, <clears throat> what was going on there. But once you try to go higher, notice how we notice how this came off that high and went straight through the EMA. That's a good sign. We'll probably come back a couple of times, but that's a good sign we're probably going lower. That's to your first trigger or your first clue, I guess I should say. And of course you move up and then you fail. Look how bearish that bar is. Just go short right there. And then, of course, it comes back and gives you a failed second entry long. So another chance to get short right there. And then actually there's this swing eye is a little bit higher than that one. So technically you could count, start your count over and you might look at that one as a failed second entry long. Plus it kind of confirms that little, this is a spike down into a channel. And that kind of confirms it. So if we break lower there, it's probably another chance to go. Because if you try to go high that many times uh, and can't do it, and that does confirm that little short-term trend line, then you're probably going lower. And that would have been a nice little trade. It actually comes back to the trend line again here, but <clears throat> you've got some su some support across there. Uh, you're, you've been, you're starting to get away from the EMA. You don't have two measured legs yet. Uh, that's another thing. You notice you got one leg, and then you got your other. And you can see we pretty much came real close to a measured move there. So that one's one to consider. I just didn't really want to mark it. Um, you could argue for that to be green. I'll go ahead and put it, put a green one on there, but I think it's a little risky. I think you're better off. You already had several good trades above it. Why risk one down there? It's never a good idea to go short at the low of a big move. And you know, you can see we, this was, if you just count from here, even to there, that's a big move. So you're going short right into the lows and you got the three bar matching lows and you see, we didn't go far before we bounced, but uh, you know, it's just not a great place to go short. So, and of course we bounce, you get a first entry, you push on through the EMA, you get a second entry short. Um, again, even though this is a failed second entry short, I marked it, it would have worked. It does kind of confirm this trend line right here. You can see that. But the problem here is that we're headed down. We just came off the top and we, this is the first break of this is a little spike and channel down and that's the first break. And we haven't tried to make a new low yet. Um, sure, you can see there has been some support across there. So maybe it's going to bounce higher, but you don't know that. So, um, without having a really good signal bar. If we'd had a real strong signal bar there, I just said, take that one. But that signal bar, it's still bullish, but it's not a perfect signal bar. And because it's a trap, it doesn't matter. A failed second entry reversal type trap, it doesn't really matter about the signal bar, but it's just the overall context of this thing. The fact that we've had the break and we don't have a new low. And you do see we went on to make a new low before we took off again. Uh, there's just some reasons to be leery of that one. So if you took it, it worked, but it's just, I consider that a little bit aggressive. It's not a perfect setup. And of course we get the break here. We try to go higher once. We make a second leg down. We try to go higher twice and pull back and test that EMA. That's a little reversal type pattern. Big bearish bar closes on it. It's open on its low, traded all the way up and then closed on its very low again. Um, and it, notice how we came, we shot through the EMA and pulled back. That's a good place to go short. Same thing here as over here. It's kind of like a little repeat pattern. Um, except your signal bar is not as good. So, and it's right into those lows. So there's a good chance that support's moved up now. So I'd skip that one. Of course, we dropped down. And if we'd had a good signal bar here, I'd have said that might be worth trying to ride it back. Notice how we push up right through the EMA, pull back. And you get all these little matching lows when it broke lower there and failed and turned up and closed almost on its high. Just go along there. You'll get, you'll at least probably get a second leg and we're probably headed to the other side. 
It does run up, and you get a failed second entry short right there. I didn't mark this one. Um, you had this little inside bar that's basically a doji near the high, two bar matching high. You're not back to the, the best. To, when these reversals look really good, they reverse off the EMA. This would have been a big bullish bar. Maybe you go along there again. But under this circumstance, I wouldn't risk it. Um, it does continue to go higher, but I just think it's a little bit too risky. Um, and then, of course, we come up here and we start going sideways. We really get a break. And I already talked about this one, but um, notice how you made a new swing low. And then a first entry short, second entry short. Um, then you got a double top, so first entry, second entry. But the thing here, you don't, you're don't, you not too interested in second entries because you can get whipsawed in both directions. Now, the failure counter trend is what you're really looking for. You're looking for some kind of trap or something or a little breakout pullback. And you get a little breakout that pulls back here, but now you're too close to the highs, so I don't really like entering up there. But this is probably going to turn out to be a good entry because, like I said, if we break through there, even though you got all that resistance there, uh, all these people that were probably getting short on these bearish bars are going to get trapped out or they're going to get trapped and they're going to have to exit. And that's what I mean by trapped out. And then it shoots off to the top. So that trade is worth taking. I like that trade. I only marked it green because you really need to know what you're doing. It's a little aggressive, if you, especially if you don't understand what's happening there. So I did mark it green, but that was a quick, easy trade. And then, of course, we reversed. And like I said, if we weren't so close to that overnight high right there, I would have marked this because that's a big bearish bar and you, you got a little ways back to the EMA. And in fact, you could have ridden this all the way down. It turns out to be a very nice trade. It is a lower high. Uh, and you could look at that as a failed break above uh, that high and this high. So it's, it's really, uh, you can see that it's kind of a double top there. And so it is a little break. So, you know, I just think it's too risky. I'll put a green one there. But I'd skip that trade. And hopefully you get a little reversal, which you do right here. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't take off crazily. You had to be a little concerned about this one. But the fact that that shot down off that eye right through the EMA pulls back. And then you get a big bearish bar, even though there's some matching lows there. And you do have these lows that are close. Um, it's something to consider. But but I really like that trade. I really figured we'd go all the way down. We didn't. We bounced. And then we worked our way on down. But um, you did need to be aware of this support here. And the fact that you got these little three matching lows. Um, you know, depending on the context, you, you know, sometimes that's something you want to be real leery of. And it's this is kind of a place where you do want to worry about it right into support or going long right into resistance. Here, we weren't really going long right into the main resistance that's up here. Here, you're going short right into some pretty strong resistance. But it's a range day, and we were working higher, and now we're working lower again, so... Uh, you see, we did bounce and go higher, but you can see when it pushed through there, it hit those stops of everybody that was getting long, and they had to, and they exited. Uh, so that one's real close. You could argue for it to be green, and of course, you get a little failed break lower here, and it bounces. I don't think that's worth taking long. It is a second entry. Notice, uh, uh, really, there's a second entry long right there as well, but. You could count that as a double top first entry and another leg down second entry but you got three bars stacked up there um there you know two inside bars two up down inside bars i you, know, you just need to skip that then it runs up here and where does it turn down right back at that same place where the previous highs were we move the line down to that's again i'd probably wait on the lower high here which comes here and, you know, I've talked about this before. What you're trying to do is make sure this is a correction, basically. And you want to make sure this correction's over. So if you take that first big bearish bar, it might break lower and turn and keep going up. But, you know, now that we shot below the EMA, came back. 
So now you got a lower high. That gives you a little more information that tells you this, that, hey, we're making lower highs and lower lows again. And that's the idea behind a lower high or a higher low. In this case, that you made the low. You're looking for these at reversal places. And then we're looking for prices to reverse back to the downside here because we're, we just came off the highs. And so there's information. And then, of course, you get your failed second entry long right here that pushed on through the EMA and pulled back. So, and here again, you got three matching lows, but in this case, we're probably going on lower. And I like that. What you might do is let this break lower and drop a limit order back up in here just to give you enough room to get out before here. And you would have got filled and it would have dropped on down. There's another low here. This one is a one to look at, but when you end up with one, two dojis stacked up side by side, um, I'm not sure if this broke higher or lower first. If it did break higher and turned and went out the other side, I might consider taking a short right there. I wouldn't wait for this to close though, because now you got three or more bars side by side and a couple of them are dojis. So, um, but if it did break higher first, I'll go ahead and mark that one green. But you're starting to get away from the EMA here, but it's still right off that trend line. And I would look for at least a measured leg here at a minimum. And you can see we've almost already got that. So um, if anything, that just makes the trade a little bit more suspect entering right there. So. And of course it does drop on down, but you are looking for prices to come down here. So I'd probably, like I said, that's real close to being not marked at all, but I don't really like it, but I'll, I'll leave it green. And of course we drop on down. Now you're just getting, and here's a good example. This one, big bearish bar broke higher and you go short there and it bounces and you never get lower than that. But notice that you came up. You got a second entry short when it broke lower here, but that's too bullish. But then notice what happens. You get uh, a lower high right here. So that's a double bottom. That's like another new low, first entry, second entry. So you get a second entry short there. Uh, this is looking like a range. You got enough room to get out. And of course, that's a quick, easy trade. And then it bounces again. Uh, if you'd got a really good signal bar here, I'd said, hey, in enough room to scap out, I'd say you may go long. But in this case, I'd wait on the higher or low probably because we're not back down to the over to the overnight lows, which are down here. But when this thing pushes it through and comes back and gives you a bullish bar, if it breaks above there, it's probably going higher, which it does. That's very similar to this setup right here. Boom, it goes higher. I want to say it looked like another one we had somewhere. Maybe maybe this is the one I'm thinking of. But that turns out to be a pretty good trade. We trade on up, and of course, I would have drawn this trend line here. We test it and confirm it really. We really confirmed it there because... But now you got three spread out that really confirm it. But I'd wait on a lower high here for sure because you don't know this correction's over working up through here. But we close outside and we try to go higher again. It breaks higher and fails. So if we break below here, we're probably going to at least run back to the EMA and we may continue on lower. And uh, so I like going short on a break lower. And that takes you into the 2 o'clock hour. And we're still kind of chopping sideways since that point. So, um, yeah, it's pretty decent day it's not a perfect day um, a perfect day on a range day like this we would turn down off one say this line every single time and we'd turn up off this line every single time that's the ones that are very predictable and but this was big enough where you could get these trends in here too um, so you could still trade it uh, you didn't necessarily have to enter only at the highs and lows of the range like you would if it was a real tight one so pretty good, you know, there's a number of trades today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven trades, not counting the green ones. Probably 15, 16 trades today. So there's plenty of trades to pick out one or two good ones. And, uh, you know, the iffy ones, stay away from them. And you could, you know, again, you could argue for a couple more in here. Uh, 
But um, anyway, decent trading day. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I got to get out of here today. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow and wrap up our week. But I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.